Hey, what's up, boxers? This is Zach Rizet with BuildBox. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made a jump tower type game, which is similar to the old BuildBox 2 jump tower template, but this one's got a little bit more of a 3D upgrade. So the character basically has the same movements as the old jump tower, but you're trying to make it up the ledges, and you've got these spikes that are coming down below, and the character hits those, and then the character is defeated once it comes in contact with that. So we've got a couple different things going on here. There's a couple moving parts. So I'm going to break down this game and I'm going to give you the download link to this game in the description of this video below. So keep an eye out for that and play around with this template. I hope you enjoy it. And let's go over how I made this game. Okay, so let me exit out of my preview here and let me just kind of break this down. So the first thing that needs to happen is we need the character to start heading one direction. It doesn't really matter if it's left or right, but we need the character to start heading towards one of the walls so that when the character comes in contact with the other wall, then it starts going the other direction. So the way I solved this problem, and there's, there's lots of options with this, you don't necessarily have to do it this way, but I hope that it gives you some idea. So I have this little thing called a starter block. And let me go ahead and turn on collision mode so that you can see the shape of the, starter block because right now I have it invisible and I'll show you how to make things invisible here in just a second. So when the game starts off, the character is set to dynamic. So the character is hit is definitely going to be affected by gravity. So the character goes falling down, it hits this little starter block, and then you'll see that the block disappears. But once the starter block happens, it starts heading in the direction to the right and starts heading towards this wall. And the way I set that up is I go over here into my actor's node map, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna find the one with my starter block. So here is the if collide node. So it starts off with if it collides with the affected asset starter block, then I want it to move in the right direction with a force of six in the X direction. These boxes are X, Y, and Z. So when you're moving around, that's the force. So the next thing that I wanted to do is I wanted to go and make sure that that starter block is invisible. So the way to do that is I'm going to just select my starter block real fast. And normally when you have a object or you're starting off with a basic asset, it's going to have a 3D model and it's going to have some sort of mesh or shape to it. But if you want to make an object transparent, it's really, really simple. You just select a 3D model and you just delete the node. And so then once you're messing with it in your scene, it's not gonna be seen, but the collision shape will still be there. And you can see that here. I am lifting the collision shape up and you can see that the object is still there, but it's invisible. And so there's all sorts of things you can do with that. I highly recommend messing around with the transparency of some objects. All right, so now that you have that starter block going, we also have this, this basic block down here at the bottom. That's the bottom platform. And I just have it set to static so that it's not moving anywhere, so gravity is not affecting it. And so it's able to roll along this static ground. And then once it comes in contact with the left wall, I'm gonna take it out of collision mode now. So this is the right wall actually. And then this one is the left wall. And so I have it set so that when you collide with the left wall, then it's going to move six. It's gonna move in the right direction. Once you collide with the right wall, it's going to move negative six in the other direction. So I'll go ahead and play that again so you can see. So you can see, I'll turn on the debug mode so you can see it happen. When I start this game up, look down here towards the bottom and you'll see the starter block hit, hit the character and then it's gonna disappear. Okay, so I'll turn on debug mode and then we'll start it and then boom. So as soon as it hits the starter block, it sets the motion going and then it's removed. So I'll go ahead and I'll exit out of that and you can see it's bouncing in between the two walls and that's the if collide then move nodes. So I'll get out of debug mode. I'll turn off preview. Now I wanna show you one last thing. So we go into our 3D world, we go to our starter block, and the one thing I wanted to show you is if you collide with the actor, I have a little bit of a timer or of a delay set up, uh, 0.1 seconds, so it's really, really short, and then I remove the object, and that's what makes it disappear down here at the end. That's the remove node working, okay? And so the next thing that we need to do is just add a jump node for our character, because now we've got, at this point, we've got the character moving left and right, and that's what we want, but let me show you how I added this little jump node as well. So I'll exit out of the preview. 
I'm going to go back to my 3D world, go to my actor's node map, and you can see here that I have a jump limit. I have a certain type of jump node set up where I created a jump limit and I actually coded this myself. I got a little bit of help from Nick Rodenko, our CTO here at BuildBox. But there's another video you can watch that I simply break down how you approach a problem like this where you want to create a jump limit for your jump node. And this is going to be usable by any of you. You can use this now, you don't have to code it yourself. But if you're running into something that where you want to code something and make something unique or add a special setting to a node, I show you how to attack that in this other video. So I also want to reset the jump when I collide with regular platforms. Anything that I put in the collision group platform is now going to reset the jump count. And so the way I have it set up is so that once you hit the walls, it's also resetting the jump count. Now that's totally up to you, you can change that, but I make it so that once you hit the wall, it gives you like a little platform to kind of jump off of. So it's almost like you're jumping from the wall. And I'll show you kind of what, what that looks like. So you, you jump at the moment you hit the wall and it's kind of nice and it creates a kind of a different game effect. You can see here that you, you can also hit the edge of those little platforms and you can bounce off of those platforms and I'll show you that as well. So that's the next thing. So we now have all these platforms that are set in the collision group platform. And let me show you here real, real fast. So the left wall over here is just an example. You go over here, you, uh, you select your item or your object over here on the left. You go to the collision group and you have all these different collision groups, enemies, platforms, coins, and you just wanna set it to platform and that's going to reset the jump. So now we've got the jump node working. We've got the motion left and right and we're resetting the jump as well. So that's that's cool. Now, the other thing that we did here is we added a point system where we have coins uh, for the points. And I actually haven't added a point label yet, so I'll go ahead and I'll show you how to do that right now. So this is a good example. So we've got our actor here, and then what I want to do is once I collide with a point, so I'll go over here to actions, I'll add if collide, I got a lot of if collide nodes as you can see. So we'll hook this up. We'll hook this up to a coin. We'll uh, change it to the affected asset as, as coin. Instead of do, doing the coin that's specifically labeled down here, this is the collision group coin that I was showing you just before. And then let's go ahead and add a point. So we'll grab another node and we will add a point and we'll add an amount of one. Perfect. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna go back into my 3D world here. I'm gonna go back to my mind map and let's check out the world UI and let's add in a quick label. So I'll go over here, I'll grab a default font label. I'll center it somewhere around here, not too high, not too low. I'll change the action type to score type. World, I'll do current world. Score type, we'll do points, current, keep the alignment uh, centered and then we'll click stick to edge and let's go ahead and hit save real fast since we're testing this out. And we should see that we're getting some points, but before we do that, let's make sure that the coin is actually in the collision group coin as well. So I'm gonna click my coin and you can see here that the collision group is none. So this was not going to work because we didn't set that correctly. So now I'm gonna set this to coin. I bet you anything it's gonna work now. So I'll go ahead and jump. I hit my coin and then you can see the two is changing to a three there and it's working perfectly. So that was really fast. We just added a point label there. And so I'll go ahead and I'll include that in the BB doc when we do this. Um, so I'll go ahead and exit out of the preview now. So there's some little detail here that I just kind of wanted to show you beforehand. So this little platform is kind of a specially constructed platform. And let me go ahead and I'll put it in collision shape mode so that you can see what I'm talking about. So the part of the collision shape that I put for this platform, you see it up here at the top, it's real thin. I'll go ahead and I'll move it up here so you can see. See uh, this little yellow layer here? It's not actually the full thickness of this platform because the truth is I only want the jump resetting when you hit the top of the platform or maybe the sides, but definitely not below. So I have this other invisible collision shape here that's static that 
it's uh, hiding from underneath. So when the character jumps up and hits this collision shape, it's not resetting the jump, okay? Because then if you did that, if you reset the jump every single time it was hitting from the bottom, then you could just be hammering the jump button all the way across, jump, 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 and just keep hitting the top, 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 and then go over here, top, 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 and it's not really a game anymore. It's kind of like you're cracking it or you know beating the game. It's, it's kind of like cheating. So the other thing I wanted to do is I wanted to make it so that when you're hitting the side of the platform, that it starts going the other direction because it, when before when I was doing it and it was hitting this little collision shape, it was hitting it just fine. It was colliding with it just fine and it was resetting the jump, but it was kind of slowing it down. Like it would hit the side and then it would kind of roll and then it would slowly roll towards the other wall. So what I did is I made it so that it's like when you hit the side, it just bounces back and it kind of created a cool game effect where you can kind of jump from side to side. So it allowed me to create little scenes like this. Adding that other effect allowed me to create scenes like this where you're coming down from below and you actually have to hit it just on the side you have to time your jumps correctly so you're hitting it on the side so that you're not hitting these spikes because if your character goes into one of these levels or one of these platforms where it's just covered in these little spike enemies the character is not going to make it you're going to lose the game and so it takes a little bit of skill it takes some really nice timing to be able to hit the sides of the platforms okay now the other thing is we've got these enemies here, you know, because we can't have uh, the character just keep going up and up and up forever collecting coins and there's no way the character is defeated or else it's not really a game. So what I did for that is I added some spike enemies, all right, and I added them the, to the collision group enemy so that when the actor collides with enemies, anything that is in the enemy collision group, it's going to defeat the character, it's gonna do the explosion animation, and uh, it has a little bit of a delay uh, so that you can actually watch the animation, and then it sets off the game over event observer, and that sends it to your game over UI, and then this is where you can restart the game. So. That's one of the enemies that I set up. Now, the other thing that I did is I added this, it's kind of funky, okay? There's different ways to do this, uh, but this was my idea, was to create this little character. This is a scale cube that I actually got from the asset library. You just go over here to asset library and go to assets, and I just snagged one of these scale cubes, and I thought, okay, I can make this work. So I grabbed one of the scale cubes, you just double click it and then it adds it to your objects library. Um, and then I put these spikes and I made the spikes children of the scale cube. That's what this is right here, it's inside of the scale cube. And so when this scale cube uh, scales out and it slides out to the left, these little spikes are also going to scale out and they're gonna be a little bit thicker as well because it's scaling out in just the X direction. So you just need to widen these out as well. And I have a wake up set up so that they're not actually moving until the character is well past them. So let's go ahead and I'll just take a look at this. You see I've got this wake up cube here and then we've got the scale animation set up. So the wake up cube is, uh, or the scale cube is not set up to wake up here. I have it set up so that you change the distance here in the scene. So let's say you wanna have different wake up distances for different scale cubes. Well then you don't want to uh, let me go into my scale cube node map here. You don't want to set the distance here or else that's gonna set the, set it for all of them. And and uh, you can always change it in the scene, but um, there's, there's you know multiple ways. If you want to make sure that they're all set to the exact same thing, then go ahead. You can go ahead and set it right here uh, to the distance, the wake up distance how you want, and then it'll be set for all of those enemies throughout the game. So let's go ahead and preview it again real fast so you can see what I'm talking about. Look down here, you see how the, the it scales out and it stretches I'll go ahead and jump to the next level so you can see yeah perfect so not only do the spikes or do, does the scale cube scale out but the spikes scale out with it because it's a child of the uh, because it's a child of the scale scale cube um, I hope I think this pretty much runs through it runs through the game um, that there's really not too many more secrets beyond that um, and I hope this gives you some ideas this is a pretty basic template so it's not you know groundbreaking or anything it's not an, a you know completely original idea but it'll at least get you started and hopefully it'll give you a little bit of inspiration to maybe try out some new techniques so I hope you thought this video was useful keep an eye out for more videos this week I'm gonna be making more templates for you and more games I'm gonna be sharing them with you so that you 
you can use them and you can develop your own games and make your own top hit game and make a bunch of money. So um, I hope you thought this video is useful. Keep an eye out for more videos. And as always, keep on boxing.